Good morning, this is Tehmina Khan. This is video number 3 on the boson distribution, which is the part of A-level mathematics S2 syllabus. If you want to see the video number 1 and 2, you can go to this blog spot and find the link over there. I have covered the following concepts of the syllabus in the previous videos, which are condition for a boson distribution, boson probability distribution calculation, mean and variance of the Poisson distribution. These three concepts I have covered in video number one. And in video number two, I have covered Poisson approximation to the binomial distribution, normal approximation to the Poisson distribution. And now in this one, I will cover the sum of independent Poisson variable. So I have taken examples from the CIE exam to explain the concept of these topics. So let's see the class concept with the help of examples of the questions taken from the past paper. So the sum of independent Poisson variable. As it is obvious from the question, from the topic, if two independent Poisson variables are given to you in question and you have to find the probability of the sum of those two, then how will you do this? So let's see in general how do we write it and then we will see a particular example from the question. So if the random variable x and y given to you and the perimeter lambda is given to you, lambda 1, lambda 2, like this, and you have to find sum of those two, then you add up the lambda values and get a new value. And that value you will use in the question. We have already seen that what is lambda, which is mean and variance for the Poisson distribution. So this is the perimeter for the Poisson distribution. So let's see an example. I have picked up an example from November 15, variant 7-1, and it is question number 1 in that paper. Now the question is about the failure of two computers, which is independent of each other, and on average one computer fails 1.2 times per year, and the second computer fails 2.3 times per year. And you have to find the probability that the total number of failures by the two computers in a six month period is more than one and less than four. Now if you see this lambda value mean value is given to you for per year and in the question it is asked for six month. So you need to change the interval here. We know that we change the interval according to the requirement. So let's see how do we write it. So computer, first computer, which, is, which has a random variable x, it is given there that it fails on average 1.2 times per year. But in the question, we have to find out for 6 months. So to find new value of lambda, you can divide it by 2, and it will be equals to 0 0.6. For the second variable y, it is given that it fails 2.3 times per year on average. So to find out a new lambda, new value, for 6 months, you will divide it by 2. So this is 1.15. And question says, in total, how many times it fails between uh, within 6 months and the probability for one greater than 1 time and less than 4 times it fails. So I will add up these two values because in total it is asking and it will be equals to 1.74. And this will be my new lambda for total number of failures within six months, right? So let's see now <clears throat> how we will calculate the probability. But here I will tell you one more thing that since the failure time for both of these random variable is given to you per year. So if you want to add them up first, and then you want to divide it by 2, that you can do as well. Because right now the number of failure, the interval for these two is given same for the for the year, right? So anyway, you can do it independently, separately and then add up. And if possible, if it is same interval, then you can add up and then divide it by 2. But it's better to avoid any confusion. You do it separately for each variable and then add it up. 
So now I have a new lambda which is 1.75 and I have to find out the probability of the total failure, number of failure greater than 1 and less than 4. Since Poisson distribution is a discrete random variable, uh, the integers which fall within this range are 2 and 3. So I will find out the probability for value 2 and value 3. So this is the formula to calculate the probability for Poisson distribution. So I am substituting the values of lambda and vari of variable and then I am calculating it. So it is coming 0 0.421 in 3 significant figure because the requirement of the paper is write your answers in 3 significant figure. I hope it makes sense. Now let's see two more examples from the past paper which are little challenging. And here I would like to tell you that you can uh, put this video on pause and try to solve these questions on your own first and then see the solution. So let's see how much you have understood and you can apply yourself. So this question I have taken from November 13 variant 72. And this question is saying that radio particles are emitting and uh, on average it is 150 minutes. 150 emission per 150 emission and the mean is 0 0.7 for Poisson distribution and you have to find out that for how many minutes it will emit so that you are 99% sure that no emission has happened right for how long it will happen that no emission happen and you are 99% sure so what does it mean? How you will write this inequality? Number one thing. So the meaning of the question is the probability that no emission happen is at least 99% you are sure. This is how you will write it. So what is the time period for that? That no emission happened of the radio particle, radioactive particle. So I am substituting here the formula for random variable 0. And what is my lambda? In the question, the lambda is given to you for per 150 minutes, right? So, And you have to find out for n minutes because you don't know n. You don't know your time in the question. This is the question basically. So using this unitary method, you can find out that your value of lambda will be 0.7 n over 150. So let's calculate the probability or uh, calculate the time period and this inequality will help you to calculate it. I know the value if value of random uh, variable is 0. So in place of x I will substitute 0 here and in place of lambda I will substitute this value which has unknown n. Okay, so after this you are doing simple calculation. You know anything to the power 0 is 1 and 0 factorial is 1. So it will take this shape. So do you know how to bring this down so that we can calculate n? Yes, you will apply ln on both sides. Okay, so after applying ln on both sides, now you will apply power law and this will come down here. And we know that ln e is 1. Instead of writing such long number, if you just want to write this as it is, it's better. I just want to show you because some students, after writing down the value, write answer in one or two decimal places. You should write in multiple decimal places, at least four or five if you are using value, so that your final answer is not uh, does not get affected. It's better if you use this value as it is till you do your final calculation. So anyways, after that I am simply doing cross multiplication. Now if you notice the inequality sign has reverses. Why it happens? It's because when you are multiplying by negative number or dividing negative number and inequality, the sign reverses. So I am getting answer here n is less than or equal to 2.1536. So largest time period for which uh, no emission of radioactive, uh, no radioactive emission will happen is 2.15 minutes. 
and the probability is 99% sure for this time period. So now let's see another example and this question is actually a very challenging question for most of the student. Again we are picking up two independent random variable and the mean is 2 and 3 for each one is represented by x and other by y. The question is saying given that x plus y equals to 5 it means the value of the random variable x and y when you pick up and add the sum is equals to 5 and you have to find out the probability when the sum was because of x1 and y4. Most of the time students do not understand this question what does it mean. So it is basically conditional probability. So you see the concept is merged here. So let's see how do we solve it. So what was given to you in the question was that x plus 5 equals to y. So what are the numbers, integers which can give you 5? So you list down all the possibilities here. Right? So from the random variable x you can take 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And from the random variable y you can take 1, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So combination of this will give you 5. And you have to find the probability when you are getting 5 because of this. So this case will go in numerator. The probability of this case will go in numerator. And probability of sum of all this will go in the denominator. And this is the formula we will use because for Poisson distribution this is what we use. So let's see. So it's a long question. We will do all these cases one by one. Okay, so this is exactly what I was explaining to you. That we have to find the probability that 5 is coming because of x variable 1 value 1 and y variable value 4. And here all the possibilities. Okay, so we know in the question that random variable x has mean 2 and y has mean 3. So this is my lambda for y and this is my lambda for x. So let's see one case in detail 0 and 5 when x is 0 and y is 5. So it is case number 1. Sorry, uh, I have written wrong here. Let me do correction here. It is 0 plus 5. Sorry for this mistake. Okay. So I am picking up this case. When x is 0 and y is 5. So 0 plus 5 is 5. So now this is uh, this uh, formula for uh, Poisson distribution is for variable x. And this is for y. So you can see I am writing in place of x 0 factorial, 0, 5 factorial and 5. This is the values of y and these are the values of x. And in place of lambda, because the formula is e power minus lambda, lambda power x. This formula I'm talking about, right? So now, in place of lambda, I'm using here the value for mean for variable x. So e power minus 2 from here. And in this case, e power minus 3, because lambda for here. So all these are representing for x and all these are representing for y. And after that simple calculation and you get this answer. Then I am doing the same thing for 1 and 4. When x is 1 and y is 4. Because 1 plus 4 again give me 5. So now you can see the values of x is 1. 1 and 1. And lambda is 2 which I have picked up from here. And similarly for y, x value is 4 and lambda value is 3 which is for uh, independent variable y. So in the similar way, I will do it for 2 and 3. Then I will do it for 3 and 2, all the 5 cases I have shown you. And then I am doing for 4 and 1 and then 5 and 0. So I am multiplying all this. One thing I would like to tell you here, one may think when I am saying 4 plus 1, then why I am multiplying here. 
right actually the condition 4 plus 1 is giving you 5 but if you remember the concept on the tree diagram where we first time understand ke why are we multiplying we are multiplying here because the probability of variable 4 and the probability of variable value 1 will give you 5 so that's why we multiply here I cannot draw here tree diagram otherwise I would have explained the whole thing but I hope you understand that when we are saying this and this then we multiply along the tree diagram. So it is exactly the same case. So after getting all the probabilities of the cases which can make 5 you need to add them up together right because it will be part of your denominator. And from it, the case when you pick up x1 and y4, it will go into your numerator. So now you have to write it in numerator, this probability, and in denominator, this probability, all these cases. So after that, you just have to add it up carefully, and you will get your answer. So you can try it on your calculator, and let's see what do you get. Okay, so in numerator I have this and denominator after addition I am getting this. And in the previous video I have shown you how do we take common out to make our calculations simple. Exactly the same thing I have done here. So now after that I am doing simple calculation. And for calculation I would recommend that you take a pencil and a paper and try to do it yourself. At times it seems simple but plugging in uh, the values makes problem at times when a student are not careful. So after that you will get this probability. The part 2 of the question says that the value for random variable x is r when it is r and for when it is 0 this is the equality between them. So you have to prove using this that 3 into 2 r minus 1 is equal to r factorial and after proving this you have to verify that r equals to 4 satisfy the equation. So let's try this one now. So the mean for the random variable x is given 2. So if your value is r, you are plugging in in the formula e to the power minus lambda, lambda power x over x factorial. And same thing is here, I am substituting and then I am simplifying it using law of indices. First of all, I have cross multiplied. R factorial is going to this side and rest of the thing is coming here, just like a cross multiplication. So after that, I proved what is I have to. And now I have to verify that this satisfy when R is 4. So I'm simply plugging in the value of R, which is 4. And it proves that 24 equals to 24 so which satisfy the equation so thank you very much for watching this video if you have learned anything please do press like and subscribe to the button and in my next video now I will explain sampling and estimation and hypothesis thank you very much for watching Allah Hafiz goodbye